guys. I don't believe it. I am back in the Taj Mahal. <laughs> I have gotten out of my four foot by six foot little bivy whack and Buena Vista, Mexico. And I am back in civilization in Bacalar, Mexico. Here in the second or third collapse. Uh, so anyway, guys, oh yes, it, we have reached the last day of February. It is a Tuesday. It is February 28th, 2023. Two months down. Good Lord, where are we going next? But anyway, speaking of where we're going, guys, I am wrestling with this uh, chronicle of the collapse, whether to put it on this channel or over on that other channel we don't talk about much over here. And I am going to go a little bit out uh, on a limb and we're going to color out of the lines here on uh, Collapse Chronicles today and uh, we're going to talk about UFOs and before you all start groaning I know some of you know something about my past history with UFOs which I don't need to go into other than to say I used to be a lot more down the UFO space alien all of that crap rabbit hole than I've ever been down here in the Doomer uh, you think I'm bad. I finally just gave up uh, around the year 2000 and uh, you know took the old when they show up on the White House lawn. Well then of course one showed up in the Oval Office for four years. But anyway occasionally a story and you have to admit guys I've been good. I have never had a UFO story on Collapse Chronicles, and so once every four years you get, uh, you might get to hear one. So this could be, I don't know, just uh, some lunatic rambling, or it could be the single most, the second most important story since we climbed down from the trees. And good for, this is right here off today's mainstream media news, Yahoo News, bringing us this article from Politico. Politico, which is a pretty, you know, I, I respect for Politico and good for Politico and good for, uh, and good for Yahoo News for running this story titled, We Have a Real UFO Problem and It Is Not balloons and this is a, an essay written by this fellow named Ryan Graves. I think that Ryan may have been uh, interviewed by Joe Rogan. He might be able to find a, uh, a long interview with this fellow. I think this is the same person that I remember being interviewed on Rogan. But anyway, so who is this guy, Ryan Graves? <clears throat> I joined the U.S. Navy in 2009 and underwent years of rigorous training as a pilot. Specifically, we are trained to be expert observers in identifying aircraft with our sensors and our own eyes. It is our job to know what's in our operating area. That's why in 2014, after upgrades were made to our radar system, our squadron made a startling discovery. There were unknown objects in our airspace. And I'm gonna put the link on here, guys. You can read this yourself. I'm afraid this battery might not make it, and if this battery collapses, you can pick up on this link for yourself. If you have any, any interest in the second, what could be 
nothing or could be the second biggest story in the history of humanity. So what happened? On a clear sunny day in April 2014, two F-A-18s took off for an air combat training mission off the coast of Virginia. The jets, part of my Navy fighter squadron, climbed to an altitude of 12,000 feet and steered towards Warning Area W-72, an exclusive block of airspace 10 miles east of Virginia Beach. All traffic into the training area goes through a single GPS point at a set altitude, almost like a doorway into a massive room where military jets can operate without running into other aircraft. Just at the moment the two jets crossed the threshold, one of these pilots saw a dark gray cube inside of a clear sphere, motionless against the wind, fixed directly at the entry point. The jets, only 100 feet apart, zipped past the object on either side. The pilots had come so dangerously close to something they could not identify that they terminated the training mission immediately and returned to base. I almost hit one of those damn things the flight leader, still shaken by the incident, told us shortly after, after in the pilot's ready room. We all knew exactly what he meant. Those damn things had been plaguing us for the previous eight months. And again, this was back in uh, 2014. Initially, the objects were showing up on our newly upgraded radars, and we assumed they were ghosts in the machine or software glitches. But then we began to correlate the radar tracks with multiple surveillance systems, including infrared sensors that detected heat signatures. Then came the hair-raising near-misses that required us to take evasive action. These were no mere balloons. The unidentified aerial phenomena, now known instead of UFOs, they're called UAPs, the unidentified aerial phenomenon, formerly known as a UFO, accelerated its speeds up to Mach 1, the speed of sound. They could hold their position, appearing motionless, despite Category 4 hurricane force winds of 120 knots. They did not have any visible means of lift, control surfaces, or propulsion. In other words, nothing that resembled normal aircraft with wings, flaps, or engines. And they outlasted our fighter jets operating continuously throughout the day. I am a formally trained engineer, but the technology they demonstrated defied my understanding. After that near miss, we had no choice but to submit a safety report, hoping that something could be done before it was too late. But there was no official acknowledgement of what we experienced and no further mechanism to report the sightings, even as other air crews flying along the East Coast quietly began sharing similar experiences. Our only option was to cancel or move our training as the UAP continued to maneuver in our vicinity unchecked. Nearly a decade later, we still don't know what they were. When I retired from the Navy in 2019, I was the first active
active duty pilot to come forward publicly and testify to Congress in the years since, there has been some notable coverage of the encounters and Congress has taken some action to force the military and intelligence agencies to do much more to get to the bottom of these mysteries. But there has not been anything near the level of public and official attention that has been paid to the recent shoot-downs of a Chinese spy balloon and the three other unknown objects that were likely research balloons. And that is a problem. Advanced objects demonstrating cutting-edge technology that we cannot explain are routinely flying over our military bases or entering restricted airspace. If, uh, the Director of National Intelligence reported last month 247 new reports over the last 17 months, quoting this report from the Director of National Intelligence, quote, UAP, or UFO events, continue to occur in restricted or sensitive airspace, highlighting possible concerns for safety of flight or adversarial collection activity. Some UAP appeared to remain stationary in winds aloft, move against the wind, maneuver abruptly, or move at considerable speed without discernible means of propulsion, close quote. So we're talking about 247 reports of these things over the last 18 months, virtually getting no mention in the mainstream media while a damn balloon uh, becoming, you know, anyway. <clears throat> the Navy, and he has uh, links, if you go on to this link, you can really start down this rabbit hole, and I do not advise you to start down this rabbit hole, but if you just can't help yourself, this is a good place to start now the, now the UAP rabbit hole. <clears throat> the Navy has also officially acknowledged 11 near misses with UAPs that required evasive, evasive action and triggered mandatory safety reports between 2004 and 2021. Advanced UAP also pose a growing safety hazard to commercial airliners. Last May, the Federal Aviation Administration issued an alert, and he's got a link to it, after a passenger aircraft flying over West Virginia experienced a rare failure of two major systems while passing underneath what appeared to be a UAP. One thing we do know is that these craft are not part of some classified U.S. project. Uh, Scott Bray, the Deputy Director of the Office of Naval Intelligence, testified before Congress last year, quote, we were quite confident that was not the explanation. And good old Florida Senator Marco Rubio confirmed in a recent interview that whatever the origin of these objects, it is not the U.S. military. Quote, we have things flying over our military bases and places where we are conducting military exercises and we don't know what it is and it is not ours, close quote, said Rubio, who is chair of the Intelligence Committee. And I'm not going to uh, 
lower myself to making jokes about Marco Rubio being the vice chair of the Intelligence Committee. But anyway, <clears throat> President Joe Biden rightly points out the real national security and aviation safety risks from, quote, foreign intelligence collection to, quote, hazard to civilian air traffic that arise from low-tech balloon-like entities. I applaud his new order to create an interagency UAP task force and a government-wide effort to address unidentified objects and his proposal to make sure all aerial crafts are registered and identifiable according to a global standard is good common sense. However, what the president did not address during his press conference on February 16th were the UAPs, otherwise known as the UFOs, that exhibit advanced performance capabilities. Where is the transparency and urgency from his administration and Congress to investigate highly advanced objects in restricted airspace that our military cannot explain? How will this new task force be more effective than existing efforts if we are not being clear and direct about the scope and nature of advanced UAPs? The American public must demand accountability. We need to understand what is in our skies, period. In the coming days, I will launch Americans for Safe Aerospace, the ASA, a new advocacy organization for aerospace safety and national security. ASA will support pilots and other aerospace professionals who are reporting UAPs. Our goal is to demand more disclosure from our public officials about this significant safety and national security problem. We will provide credible voices, public education, grassroots activism, and lobbying on Capitol Hill to get answers about UAPs. President Biden needs to address this issue as transparently as possible. The White House should not conflate the low-tech objects that were recently shot down with unexplained, high-tech, advanced objects witnessed by pilots. Our government needs to admit that it is possible another country has developed game-changing technology. We need to urgently address this threat by bringing together the best minds in our military, intelligence, science, and tech sectors. If advanced UAP are not foreign drones, hmm, then we absolutely need a robust scientific inquiry into this mystery. Obfuscation and denial are a recipe for more conspiracy theories and greater distrust that stymie our search for the truth. We need a coordinated, data-driven response that unites the public and private sectors. The North American Aerospace Defense Command, the U.S. Space Force, and a host of other military and civilian agencies need to be marshaled in support of a much more aggressive and vigilant effort along with our scientific community and private industry. 
Right now, the pieces of the UAP puzzle are scattered across silos in the military, government, and the private sector. We need to integrate and analyze these massive data sets with new methods like AI. We also need to make this data available to the best scientists outside of government. We have strong supporters of more data sharing. Senator Rubio has suggested the Pentagon's All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, which was set up by Congress last year, share its data on unidentified objects with academic institutions and civilian scientific organizations. The American Institute of Aeronautics and Aeronautics and the Galileo Project at Harvard at Harvard, tech startups like Enigma Labs and traditional defense contractors could all play a role. Unfortunately, all UAP reports and videos are now classified, meaning active duty pilots cannot come forward publicly and freedom of information requests are denied. These are two major steps backwards for transparency, but they can be mitigated with data sharing. I am impressed by the recent whistleblower protections enacted last year to encourage more pilots and others to come forward, and I support the fresh push by Rubio and Senator Kirsten Gil Gillibrand for full funding of AARO. Given the stakes, Congress also needs to fund grants for more scientific inquiry of UAP. Above all, we need to listen to pilots. Military and civilian pilots provide critical first-hand insights into advanced UAP. Right now, the stigma attached to reporting UAP, you know, UFOs, is still too strong. Since I came forward in 2019, only one other pilot from my squadron has gone public. Commercial pilots and, you know, their passengers also face significant risks to their careers for doing so. Well, commercial, you know, commercial pilots face significant risks to their careers by coming forward. New rules are needed to require civilian pilots to report UAP, protect those pilots from retribution, and a process must be established for investigating their reports. Derision or denial over the unknown is unaccessible, unacceptable. This is a time for curiosity. If the phenomena I witness with my own eyes turns out to be foreign drones, they pose an urgent threat to national security and airspace safety. If they are something else, it must be a scientific priority to find out. And there you go, guys. Uh, that article uh, makes it the first UFO article ever to come and to make it uh, through the Collapse Chronicles uh, Space Alien Wacko Filter. And uh, th good for you, amen, Ryan Graves, amen, Politico, and amen for Yahoo News. There, there, there was nothing in that, there was nothing in that essay. Nothing in that essay. Uh, to me, that is debatable. Uh, I am not going to take 
this channel or even that other channel down this rabbit hole. I've been there, done that, and uh, good God. Uh, anyway, we will be back to the normal Doomer rabbit hole tomorrow, but uh, guys, this story is or is not the second biggest story in the history of humanity. We will find out soon enough whether it is the second or even the first biggest story in the history of humanity, I guess. Anyway, with that, uh, I guess it's time for me to start my uh, margarita search as I look towards the skies. Look towards the skies while you still can. My guys. I don't believe the camera made it.